Hi, a couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Hi guys, today I was thinking I'm gonna paint not one, but two owlbears. One from Reaper Miniatures and one from Whiskids. And as you can see, I actually have painted a couple of Whiskid owlbears back in the day. Uh, but I figured I wanted to do something a little bit different with these. I wanted to have a little bit more complex color scheme, if you will. Now, one thing with this owlbear from Reaper Miniatures, I've already uh, gone over him and actually unboxed him. Uh, I'm just looking here how the base and the actual pose, which is a very dynamic pose. He looks exceptionally dramatic, but it's kind of a difficult you know, thing to get underneath his left wing and paint with the base there. So I figured I'm gonna pin him. Uh, looking at the Whiskids owlbear, it has <laughs> quite severe mold lines and, and sort of flash lines that I need to fix. You can see that there are some uh, lines, I guess this, they've made this into separate parts. Uh, some of them are, are okay in my book, while others are quite bad. Um, but I figured that I would just go over most of these since it's mostly fur and feathers. I'm gonna go over most of these with just sort of a, a shaping tool. Uh, but these are, this is the way both of them look. And I can't say that I really have a favorite. I think both of them are actually quite nice in their own respects. Um, but yeah, so first off, I'm gonna go over the Whiskids Mini uh, using one of those Citadel uh, mode line remover tools and my thingies. Um, it worked fairly well, and I discovered one thing also that actually having a little bit more muscle and actually um, sort of almost not cutting but uh, shaping some of the mode lines to sort of overlap the seams actually worked quite well. Uh, um, so, I didn't want to use any epoxy or two-part epoxy or, or, or some sort of um, uh, millipot or something like that. Um, so, uh, to the pinning. Uh, for this, I used one of these miniature uh, manual drills and I happened to have uh, handy some uh, wire that I could uh, just pin it to and I just found a good drill that was the approximate size and uh, it's actually a paper clip so the process here was quite easy just try to drill somewhat straight uh, and be very careful here because that drill is quite sharp and then dry fitting everything seemed to be a quite snug uh, fit which was good so I just took a little bit of super glue uh, on the top of this um, paper clip and uh, pretty much just put it in there and let it set. And then on the opposite side, I put a cork uh, there just from like, you can buy bottles of that, uh, or bottles. <laughs> you, you don't have to drink a uh, shit ton of wine bottles. You can actually buy a bag of uh, wine corks or whatever you call it, wine caps. So with the whisk kits, I used some pressure to just make sure that uh, it stuck well. Uh, for the priming, I chose to go with a Xenophil priming. I wanted to try to, again, explore the art of um, not using so heavy paints, but more actually glazing. So you can see that I actually primed the base separately. So out comes the wet palette and uh, I hadn't used it for some while so it actually dried up on me. And I have to ask you guys out there, do you also get this nice little uh, effect when you put the paper down that it sort of curls together? Uh, I wonder if it's just me, I don't think so. But when it came to colors, I decided that, you know what, I'm gonna go a little bit crazy. So I used uh, some sort of light brown, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of red. Painting these owl bears was as much sort of um, color theory as I've done yet. 
uh, I purposely almost tried not to be very, very sort of accurate and use one type of color from, you know, a certain brand. I also uh, wet some uh, tissue paper just to dry off uh, most of the liquids uh, once you load up your brush and then I just well, went to town and I started sort of blocking in the basic colors. Now I knew I wanted this owl bear from Reaper to be more sort of uh, towards the warm brown sort of uh, color so I went to town and basically tried to define what uh, on the owl bear I wanted to have this particular color and I knew I wanted to have a mixture of uh, these brown colors uh, and then probably a, a little bit of black and white uh, i can't remember what kind of owl it is i, I think in sweden we, we call it a mountain owl or something uh, it's one of the larger owls it has a very sort of peculiar sort of uh, brown white black um, colors on its uh, feathers so i took some uh, off-white uh, and just lowered that into the brush then removed uh, most of the water and got to work on some of the sort of um, bright details. I wanted some on, on his face and then his, uh, well I guess it's uh, ear tufts also will be uh, colored. And then I want, went also to the tail and uh, um, at this point it was time to bring in a little bit of a black. So same procedure thinned it out and then uh, wipe off uh, the liquids uh, in this case it's thinner or actually thinner in water um, just to sort of leave most of the paint left on your loaded brush so as you can see i'm going for one row of sort of black feathers so it will be sort of brown black and then uh, white um, or in different sort of uh, different combinations just to sort of uh, pull the, the eye's attention to to his uh, nice uh, well to his nice uh, feathers essentially uh, and also i mean if you look at this mini like i said before it's quite dramatic it almost looks like he he's taking a ole pose you know almost like a one of those uh, classical uh, spanish dancers or something I'm a little bit unsure of exactly what he's doing. It, it could also, I guess, look like he's getting ready to hit you with his right paw. Now, this sort of uh, pattern of colors, uh, I put that on his face as well, on his sort of uh, cheek feathers uh, and then across the ears, um, just to sort of have that as a common theme. And I knew I'm, gonna, I'm going in pretty hard at this point. Uh, with the colors, I'm making them really sort of, well, sort of taking them really to the extreme because I knew I was going to come in later with washes and sort of try to bring everything a little bit together. So the white is super white and the black is really dark and the brown is very sort of monotone. I also uh, painted up his nails using a black color because uh, it just looks better. I've tried different uh, ways of sort of painting nails. On animals in general, it feels like painting them black, it, it, it's never wrong. Uh, it often feels like the correct choice. And then on his sort of feathers on his arms, the outer feathers gets the same sort of, uh, same sort of color he has on his body. Now at this point, I'm gonna go in and try to define his chest area. Um, so one thing that I've noticed also uh, is that a lot of animals tend to, I mean, depending on how you look at it, you might want to think that, oh, it's darker on the chest area, hence I need to have darker colors. But the fact is that a lot of animals have actually brighter colors on their sort of chest and, and stomach area. Um, so I wanted to sort of mimic that and you can also see there that I'm trying to sort of feather, <laughs> no pun intended, this out uh, along his arms and even on his fingers so it looks like it's being faded out to some sort of uh, brighter version of that brown and here uh, like I said I'm gonna go uh, quite crazy with the colors I am just 
I'm, I'm just in a flow at this point. I'm just sort of going, so I mix some black and some brown and try to create a darker shade at the very bottom, uh, partly because shadows, but also I imagine that, that those legs probably get a lot of sort of grime and dirt on them, so. Here I'm mixing up a little bit more of that darker color uh, and I'm going I think even uh, a few shades darker at this point. It's essentially, it's almost black but with a hint of uh, brown <clears throat> in it. So at this point uh, I'm just putting some yellow into the palette and trying to, uh, some warm yellow, trying to get his eyes um, to really pop. Uh, also finishing the beak, uh, doing a little bit of a uh, mixture of color so his beak is not just totally black but more sort of grayish. It's seen some wear and tear. Uh, and at that point I think I'm switching to uh, the Whiskids model. Now I was thinking how I would want this to be same but different and I decided to go with uh, some brown color and then put in some red just to make it really sort of uh, I wanted this owlbear to not be like the other owlbear I painted before which was very sort of brown but actually I wanted this one to be I'm not sure what this color is called but more like a almost blood brown or something like that much more sort of uh, warmer uh, brown it's it's almost rust brown um, so here I'm basically just covering the entire freaking owl bear with this and being very careful to first uh, sort of painting the back and the top of the arms those areas which I know I'm gonna come up and come back in with a second coat but not the areas I know that I want to feather and here again <laughs> I am going uh, crazy I'm just mixing whatever I had on my palette to be honest I, I was at this point a little bit uh, experimenting with stuff so I'm just taking this uh, very uh, off-white uh, light yellow and I'm focusing on his chest area and then at the edges I'm trying to just sort of smooth everything out. So at this point I decided uh, or the, the Reaper Albert had had enough time drying so I decided to do uh, a, basically a, a wash all over the body with uh, I think it was Army Painters soft tone. I didn't need um, that much definition just a little bit of shadows and uh, or definition in all of the shapes because there was quite a lot of details on this uh, sculpt or on this miniature and I didn't want anything to sort of uh, be missed so pretty much just covering everything with this that also makes it look not sort of uh, just a, like a like a fresh owl bear but more something some an owl bear that I've seen some some action and been in a couple of you know fights over food or whatnot and that's what it looks like uh, currently we're gonna set that I think to the side to dry so back on uh, yeah here I had a camera failure you can see that I've painted with the lighter brown some uh, areas of a feather some areas on his uh, uh, his cheeks and then on, on the top of his head and you can also see I've gone in with some yellow for the eyes some dark lines uh, across sort of his, what do you call it his eyebrows or whatever and then at the very end I decided to go with white at the tops sort of here I'm just penciling in some uh, black colors in between the, the light brown and the white just to sort of have that same sort of uh, that same sort of paint scheme because I, I really did like it on the Reaper and I wanted to sort of try to do something similar so here I almost had to um, basically try to simulate that because the feathers even though they were more on this mini it didn't feel like they were that separated and, and it wasn't that clear sort of uh, the rows of feathers so here I'm going back in with some yellow because yellow is one of those tricky colors uh, it often requires multiple coats and I think actually I went in on oh yeah right I, I mix up a little bit of even brighter sort of um, or not brighter but more pale yellow uh, just to give the eyes some sort of a highlight 
Um, so I'm just sort of putting that in. And then very important when you're doing ice, especially on monsters and stuff, you have to let the ice dry before you go in with the final sort of pupil. So uh, at this point, we are back on uh, the Reaper uh, miniature. And I'm doing the same thing here. I'm trying to sort of define some of the shapes around his eyes. I'm trying to actually make like a dark line. And then uh, once I've done that, I fill in the eye with some yellow. This uh, sculpt's eye, the one from Reaper, didn't have as defined eyes, I have to say. And it was more looking downwards than forwards. The whisk one, here I'm, I'm sort of penciling in the actual pupils. Uh, I have to say that <laughs> it looks a little bit like it's, uh, it's, it's coming straight from a pub or something, but uh, I was just trying to sort of, uh, one trick is when you're doing large pupils is try to pencil in like a small pupil and then make it, uh, you know, check if, if your directions are right and then make it larger and larger uh, up until the point where you're happy with it. So here I am just trying to sort of, like I said before, trying to get more definition in the eye. So I'm almost like putting a thin line of, uh, of black across his eyes to sort of just give it a little bit of a makeup, uh, what do you call it, eyeliner or something like that, or mascara, something like that, just to give it a little bit more definition. Now, at this point, the Reaper base was entirely unpainted. So Again, I went with what I had in the palette and I, I saw some rocks there and I figured, well, these uh, rocks need to be bright. And then I basically, you can see on the wet palette there, I've mixed a little bit of brown, a little bit of, you know, everything. You're gonna see my wet palette gets more and more, uh, let's just say, creative. <laughs> but I, I really do enjoy this because you, you just end up in a flow. And then also, as I said in the beginning of this video, um, I realized that this is a good way of sort of in real time testing your your color theory um, sort of uh, knowledge and and I'm just a, a beginner in color theory so I'm I'm barely above sort of uh, you know the kindergarten uh, uh, level I still have to sometimes ask my wife sort of uh, what do you get when you mix uh, red with green you know stuff like that. So here I'm putting in some drops of, I think this is Army Shaders Red Ink, and I'm mixing this with some soft, um, soft tint. So I wanna create, uh, you remember the Whiskids Bear that was much more sort of reddish, and I wanna sort of retain that tone. So I just did a, a mixed some wash to sort of, um, yeah, I guess uh, retain that tone and just create a little bit more darker definition because you can see again with the wash you start to see that this uh, miniature is quite nice and then I'm also darkening down of course the areas that are bright white because I don't want them to be quite that white and um, this should look like a like an owlbear that's seen some action um, but that's also a, a good thing never be afraid of uh, playing around with sort of mixing washes uh, because eventually it will just become second nature and, and you know it, it is really a good tool to have. Here I'm even taking some black uh, color and then mixing it into the rest of the wash because I put on too much and I just put it on the Reaper uh, base just to get some sort of a dark wash and it actually turned out pretty nice. So here are the bears side by side. Uh, here's the final result that was a very quick look at uh, the base the thing that I was missing with uh, the base for a Reaper uh, out there was of course a little bit of dry brushing and similar to uh, how I've done this so far I just took what I had in my wet palette and I just did two layers of dry brushing one with sort of a light tan and then a little bit of white and then I just glued on the Reaper out there to the base now with that dry brushing, I also, once it had dried, went over uh, the Whiskids Owlbear a little bit. And uh, yes, also, I actually put the same wash, I think, on um, sort of the ground on this uh, Owlbear, just to get a little bit more definition. And then it was about painting black, and sorry for being out of camera, there you go, I, I realized it as I was painting. But just painting the rims black and finalizing these out bears. 
So with that, let's have a look at the final result. So all right, guys, here they are. I put in some uh, grass tufts and of course I uh, varnished uh, the entire model with matte and then I did a gloss varnish on the eyes, uh, the claws and the beak and the mouth. And also I forgot to mention that of course I painted the mouth in a red color and tinted it with some uh, red wash. Alright guys, if you like what you've seen here, uh, please consider subscribing. It means the world to me when you do, or commenting. Tell me about your situation at home. Do you have boxes of shame that keep you up at night? And with that, I bid you a good day. Toodaloo.